Welcome to the Farm Family Harmony Podcast. I'm your host, Elaine Fraze, Canada's Farm Whisperer. I've been helping farm families in agriculture find harmony for over 30 years, and now I'm bringing some simple, practical tools to you. Get help here creating transition plans and learn how to talk through the tough topics and conversations with your farm family. Now let's get into this episode topic. I'm so glad you're here. It's Elaine Fraze, Farm Family Coach here, and welcome to episode four of our Farm Family Harmony podcast. And today I'm really excited to introduce you to one of my coaching team, Jenna Zerba. Jenna has a very interesting background. I'll let you listen to her story. And we're going to focus on the theme today of dealing with grief and loss as you go through farm transition. So Jenna, what would you like the listeners to know about your story? Um, so my story, so my background is um, I grew up on a, a dairy farm and then um, we had grain and beef. And so I lived that life my whole, you know, growing up, um, did my nursing and I've now been nursing since 2009 and specialized in palliative care since 2016. And um, I love my work. In addition to that, um, my husband and I, um were married in 2011 and farmed for a bit and then had our own transition in which we separated and um from the from my husband's farm family when we were farming with them and went on our own um with the help of some friends for a year or or two years and then decided to um leave farming altogether for a multitude of reasons So so First, first thing you said, I, I think should have made people sit up a little bit more listening to this is that you enjoy your work as a palliative care nurse, you help people die. And you journey alongside with the family when they're going through one of the biggest and hardest and toughest things ever in their entire life. So I have known you for quite a few years now, Jenna, and I also know that you're very uh, excited about the possibility of understanding how loss and grief also intertwine with with conflict resolution. So when you made that decision with your husband Kyle to separate to leave the family farm when is it when it was expected that you would sit, stay, what was the most helpful things that you discovered through that process, or did you only discover them looking in the rearview mirror? Yeah, I think that the the hindsight is always um what you you look back and you wish that you would have known now what you you know know then what you know now um i think that um farm transition is really difficult and i think i think that um i did the best at the time that i could you know and so it's it's about having self compassion and learning from your experiences and and being able to grow with that so part of part of what you journeyed and that's when I first met you is you did reach out for coaching and facilitation to understand that you are not the only young couple that was navigating this tough um, decision and I think we we as a coaching team have worked with other farm families and ranchers who have made the difficult decision to leave their family of origin ranch or farm And one of the resources that we talk about is Necessary Endings by Dr. Henry Cloud, What to Do When Things Don't Work Out. So if we are to frame this in terms of dealing with loss, what kinds of losses as a coach do you see now working with farm families? What kinds of loss are people really struggling with that they they really don't, maybe aren't that easily able to put their finger on? Do you have a way of framing it for them from your work in palliative care that helps you transfer your grief and loss skills into grief and loss and farm transition? Um, Yeah, I think, I think, um, I mean, even myself, I think people often think of grief as only something that happens when someone dies, but it's not grief is when you experience loss. And in farm transition, there's a lot of loss that 
I think everyone involved experiences and, and doesn't acknowledge a lot of the time because when you're going through a transition and you choose to leave, there's usually reasons that you're choosing to leave um, that that's pushing you in that direction. And I think you focus more on those things and um, the feelings that are tied with those reasons rather than the loss that you're actually experiencing. Um, for me, that loss was, it was hindsight. It was going through it after and um, that I had a lot of realization. So I think when in, in the coaching role now, what people don't understand sometimes when they're going through the transition and they're experiencing this is that it's it's a, a loss and a grief related to what, sh what they wish would have been mm -hmm. and what is, right? And I think that there's a huge disregard or it, people just aren't aware of it because they're sad or they're angry or they're resentful or there's just so much going on. And so I think having an understanding in that and being able to help people understand that there is grief, that there is loss as they do these transitions and acknowledging that, acknowledging what it is. Um, and then also, you know, I think counseling is really, really healthy. I think everybody should do some level of counseling because I think that it helps you have realizations that you maybe can't have on your own. And I think that when you say that, one of our coaching phrases that we use often is counseling is about recovery. Coaching is about discovery. So there is a therapeutic need and desire for people to look at what it, past hurts and, and grief and loss they are trying to navigate and find some healthy coping skills for that. And the work that we do on our team at um, Farm Family Coach is to help families use coaching as a facilitated process, right? To, yeah. to figure out and navigate clear expectations and timelines and certainties of re agreements um, for going forward. I'm just curious for Kyle. I know he's a really super good welder and a great entrepreneur, and he's won an award for his new business in Dauphin. And that just makes my heart sing because there was a very low point I expect for him with his identity. He, he thought he was going to be a farmer and I think his parents felt very strongly, and many founders do, that this is what I expect of you as my child. And so what happens to navigate that loss of identity? Um, you know, that's that's difficult. It's and, and I think it's another thing that you don't fully realize because you're so enthralled in the transitioning and what you're going to do and just the aspects of leaving a farm and changing your business over and selling and all of those things. Um, and it, it's not a quick process. And I think that, um, I, I think it's important for people to understand that when they come for coaching, that there is that distinguishment between coaching is about discovery, counseling is about recovery, because I know for myself, when we came to you, I was looking for you to help just tell me what I needed to do and fix it. Right. right. Like, right. and I wanted, and, and, and the reason that, that we sought you out was because you were one of the few people that was egg related, but also um, because I was looking for a neutral opinion, somebody that wasn't tied emotionally to us in any way that didn't know us. And that could be very objective in how they looked at what was going on and give feedback. But I also wanted somebody to just say, this is what you have to do. And that, I mean, there's parts of coaching that push you to kind of look at things, but ultimately <laughs> you have to figure that out. But there's a huge loss of identity. Um, and I can't speak for Kyle because I'm not him. So I don't want to, um, you know, speak in his place for sure. But um, I, I know that that transition was difficult because I think that farming is often one of those things that is just in your blood. And so, um, you know, having that, it, it's not that he doesn't want to or didn't want to. Um, 
but there's also the logical part and the all of the things that you look at when you're considering leaving, obviously, right? Um, he loves it. He still loves it. He loves going to work for farmers now. Um, and so there, there is a loss of identity, but there's also ways of finding your identity in new things mm -hmm. and then still holding on to those parts of your identity in different ways. And I think we've learned that along the way. And so, I, think, I think too, what makes him such a great business person and welder and supplier to farm families is because he's walked that journey before. Yeah. Too right, Jenna. So he 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 understands the culture of agriculture, and the farmers who work with him are very, I'm sure, very happy and pleased that he has that history and that culture, and understanding that that comes with being raised on a farm and and really embracing agriculture. Absolutely. So you talked about the importance of therapy too. Why do you think farmers are particularly stubborn and resistant? to getting counseling for their grief and their loss? Um, I think in, I think there's still, I mean, they've done lots of work in the areas of mental health to try to normalize that going to a counselor or going to, you know, a mental health proctor is just like going to the doctor for your physical needs. Right. Uh, but I think it's a lot of the stigma that's tied to counseling and asking for help. Um, that that is a sign of weakness you know i i think that that's something that's often still portrayed especially in the i mean the the agriculture world right and i think it's it's changing i think there's a slow change because of the work that's being done and the promoting of mental health and awareness and all of that but um i think that especially because farming is in the rural communities that there's definitely stig like a certain kind of stigma that's attached to it and you and I were part of a the na a national um, beta study uh, with the National Farmers Mental Health Alliance which is really really helpful where they're wanting to train more counselors all across North America to be um, ag informed therapists so that when someone is going through a mental health event um that they're not told to go home and take the next three weeks off when there's cows and livestock and whatnot to be be cared for so all of you who are listening we encourage you to also check out the national farmers mental health alliance and and see the the work that they're doing and and finding egg informed therapists that way too would be great excuse me i need a drink of water obviously so jenna yeah and i think that the part of that training that was so important was the, the the change of shift in mindset to resilience isn't pushed through and do whatever you need to which is what needs to happen because you know agriculture is you work when you can work when the weather's right all of those things but um you know there's also the asking for help when you need it right and i think that that's so important is knowing when you need help and asking for it when you need it so jenna you also said that when grief happens and people are navigating grief, quite often people just think, well, who died? Mm -hmm. Actually, that is another aspect that we deal with as coaches because you are my favorite coach to refer farm widows to because of your deep understanding of grief. And I think, is there a website that you like to send people to? Is it called mygrief.ca? Tell people about that. Yeah, there's mygrief.ca. Um, it's through Virtual Hospice, the Canadian Virtual Hospice, which is actually a website that was started out of Winnipeg. Um, I think it was St. Boniface that has it. I, I can't quote, I'm pretty sure it's St. Boniface, but mygrief.ca actually allows you to go through um, online modules um, at your own pace on your own time. And it just helps you give some realizations about what's normal in grief, because I think um, what, what I know is people feel that what they're feeling is not right and because grief isn't something that people are used to feeling. And if it has never happened to you where you've had a, a huge loss, whether it's a death or whether it's a, you know, an anything, an accident, uh, you know, uh, just loss of something that's ex extremely significant to you, you feel like you're something wrong with you when it's not. You feel wrong about feeling guilty or about feeling what you are and so it normalizes 
what grief is and what you're experiencing so that people understand it better. And I, I think when you you and I are coaching, one of the things that shows up for me as a, a seasoned coach is if a farm widow is still hearing the voice of her spouse who's died and and she's taking direction from what he would have wanted or what she thinks he would have thought, that makes it very difficult to break free into more discussion of creating solutions and opportunity for the farm transition with the with the couple that is you know present to wanting to see things move on even though the death may have happened two three five years ago or longer so there is an intertwining that we see in coaching in in how the impact of that grief and whether or not that grief has been resolved how it, it keeps people stuck so I think it's it's really important just to be aware of that so we have another saying in our team Jenna that talk does not cook rice. <laughs> so we've been chatting here about dealing with grief and loss on the farm. So if you had a call to action for the listeners listening to this podcast today on grief and loss and just understanding it better, what would you like people to do today as a result of hearing this conversation with you? Um, I, I think when it comes to grief and loss, we often look to other people sometimes. And I think um, my learnings and one of the best things that I could recommend is to have people sit down and do some self-reflection about what it is they need to do for themselves, what they want, what they're feeling, and be true to what they need in order to find some resolution in that. And so it's about looking towards yourself rather than looking to other people to give back what you need because that's that's where it starts and and knowing internally in in our uh, cycle of renewal that i trained as a hudson coach with the hudson institute of santa barbara we call that cocooning and cocooning is not a very popular um stage or place for many people in north america because it requires like you say a place of healing it's a healing journey it requires inner reflection and and therapy and also maybe some crafts, some art, some doing things that help you see um, your world around you in a different way and give you time to listen in the silence. So it might sound a little bit woo-woo to some of the listeners, but it is a real actual stage in the cycle of renewal to help people get back to getting ready to a new phase and then going for it again. So I want to thank you for spending time with us today. We also have a tool called um, What I Want, which we'll make available to you in the show notes. And I think a big frustration I have as a coach, Jenna, is when I ask a 67-year-old farmer what he wants, his knee-jerk response is, well, I, mean, I don't know, I just want to go farming. <laughs> and then we ask his spouse and we get a totally different answer. So Thank you, Jenna, for sharing your thoughts today. And I encourage listeners to reach out to farmfamilycoach.com. Uh, give us a review. We have a contact page that you can reach out to us for a free discovery call. And Jenna and our team of coaches are here to serve and help your family find harmony through understanding. Take care and we'll see you next time. Are you in a farm family that's struggling with getting a transition plan? Most farmers across North America do not have a written plan due to procrastination or conflict avoidance. That's why I've created the Farm Family Harmony Membership. It will help farm families get past those barriers and finally make a plan that gives everyone clarity, peace of mind, and harmony back on their farm.